Hi, good morning, Marysville Church. For those watching that may not know me, I'm Clark Green. I'm a former member of the Marysville Church, and our family sends our love from Fort Myers, Florida. I'm honored that Jeff asked me to lead your thoughts this morning for just a few minutes as we virtually surround the Lord's table. Although some of us are far apart, we partake of this communion together and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've been reading through the Old Testament chronologically over the past few months, and for those of you that have done this, as you navigate through Exodus and into Leviticus and even Numbers, the amount of information and details that God gives Moses regarding things like the construction of the tabernacle with its 50 loops per curtain and the fact that the lampstand had to be made out of one solid piece of gold and it had to weigh a certain amount and the, the three inch lip around the table and all those many details surrounding the tabernacle. And then we learn what animal is acceptable for a sin offering versus a fire offering or what is required for a fellowship offering and how they're to sacrifice each animal or, or offer each thing for each of these and some of those required the blood to be spattered on the size of the altar and others were done in different manners. And then we learn that if you can't afford uh, uh, the original items, that there were things that you could offer in place of those. And then we learn what animals are unclean versus those that are clean and how the Israelites were to purify themselves if they became unclean based on certain circumstances. And then we learn about the timing of what days um, they're supposed to do what offering based off of certain festivals and how they counted so many days from each festival. And the more and more you read and the more you learn, it just makes your head spin. And as I read through these chapters, first and foremost, I wonder how on earth did they remember all of that? As I read through these um, passages, I get a few verses down and I have to go back and reread because I can't remember the things that have been outlined. There's so many details that are involved. And I just wonder how they navigated through all those requirements. But then I wonder how long did it take before this just became so overbearing and mundane because they were doing the same things again and again. This morning as we reflect on this Lord's Supper that was instituted by Jesus for us to follow, I'm relieved that we don't have to follow all of these rules. God today is more interested in a close and intimate relationship with his people. Our communion together this morning has very little rules that surround it. We're instructed to do it on the first day of the week. We're instructed to use unleavened bread, and we're instructed to use the fruit of the vine. But in addition to that, we're challenged to do it appropriately. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul tells us that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. In this way, let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. So even though this memorial isn't bound by a bunch of rules, we must partake of it with a right heart, and we must partake of it with a right mindset, realizing that we are communing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So with that in mind, let us give thanks for the bread. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you bless us with. We're so thankful for the many blessings that you so richly bestow upon us. God, we're thankful for the technology that you have blessed us with to be able to uh, commune with each other and with you. Uh, even though we're apart from each other, we can do it virtually through technology, and we're just so thankful for that. God, we're thankful for um, the bread that we're about to partake of that fitly represents the body of Christ that hung on the cross of Calvary for us, and we pray that as we do so, that we understand the sacrifice that was made and the love that you had for us, and that we do so with a, in a worthy manner. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let us continue our thanksgiving. Our Almighty God, we continue this prayer of thanksgiving to you. We're so thankful for this fruit of the vine that fitly represents the blood of, Christ, blood of Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. We know that through the shedding of that blood, we have an opportunity of forgiveness of sins and a hope with uh, you um, for eternity. And God, we're thankful for 
this fruit of the vine that um, you've given us, given us as a symbol that represents that blood. And we pray that we will uh, partake in a worthy manner this morning. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.